So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the 2020 Mazda 3 Sedan Elite. This unit has already been phased out but I've been told uh, there are only a few differences between this 2020 model and the 2022 models. This used to be the anti-level model and unlike the current 2022 model, this had halogen lights but still mixed with an LED light here. And then ground clearance is 135 millimeters. It's a bit small, similar to a Nissan Almera, but that's a subcompact car, but just for comparison only. I will compare this to a Toyota Corolla Hybrid since it's a compact car. Sorry, I won't compare it to a Honda Civic yet because I haven't driven it. But it's up the ante a bit since they're compact cars. I will compare this to a Volkswagen La Vida Club Edition Plus and a Volkswagen Lamando. Looks wise, okay, this is a very sharp but very, very beautiful design. Even though in sedan form, I'm a big fan of the hatchback, but this sedan is not too bad at all. I have yet to see this on the road actually. Majority, I keep seeing the hatchbacks. So yeah, just simple looking design. You have small wheels and you have a chrome window king here. There's no sunroof on this Elite by the way. Newer models get them as well. And also, uh, I cannot wait to test this out soon. Uh, there is already a new mild hybrid version for the hatchback and the sedan version. I heard there are demo units coming so I am very excited to dive this and how it compares to the regular uh, non-hybrid models. Differences between the hatchback uh, is this. And the hatchback, it's, this part is blacked out and this one is chromed out. So what I can't say much, it's a very very beautiful car. With that it, I'll show you the interior. So this is the interior of the Mazda 3 sedan. I'll lower that down. It's, just, it's suddenly hot today. Every time I go to Mazda Passing, it's hot. This interior looks lovely. Yes, this is only the former base variant of the Mazda 3 sedan, but wow, it's it's still nice. Even though this, yes, as I keep saying, it's a base variant, the materials fit and finish here are still premium. Yes, squeegee material here. Even softer leather here now. It's not Napa, by the way. Yeah, very few hints of plastic. Yeah, still hard. That's a nice integration of the door handle look. Let's stretch. The chrome stretches all the way here to the door. That's good. Fabric. Okay, this is the only part in the door that's plastic which holds your bottle holder and cubby space and another small cubby space. Same with the other door. And then gloss black around here in the window switches. Yes, you can see it's dirty but it's fine. Here on the left side you have a chrome bit here. This could have been a cubby space, just saying. But a few black buttons, I mean a lot of black buttons, there's more underneath here, there's four more. You have your parking sensor button here and then electronic stability control button. And you have a storage here, enough for coins only, like literally that's, it's that small. And then steering wheel, okay I'll be honest, it's similar to a Volkswagen La v ah, no, Lamando, it's hard but it's girthy. But there's still some squidgy in it. I mean like there's it's a bit soft, but it's it's more of the durable side of leather. Yeah, I love this look of this thing. It's similar to a Porsche. And yes, being the base variant, there are a few more blank buttons here. These are your cruise control functions, at least there still is. And then buttons for your infotainment and volume. Okay. And then oh there's paddle shifters in this by the way. And it's plastic. So also how to activate manual mode. You just press the minus button and then you long press this just to turn off manual mode if you want. And then here, actually, these are digital, the gauges. Actually very cool. I didn't even notice it the first time. Okay, let me turn it off. Wait, to confirm it's digital. Yep, see? Oh, <laughs> low key fob. Anyway. Okay, there's a nice animation still when you open it. And then your infotainment system. This is how you control it. Okay, it's not BMW, sorry. It's a swivel wheel. Is it touch screen? No, it's not touch screen, sorry. I'm not sure, sorry. I've never tried out Mazda products. Okay, it's not touch screen, but at least the swivel wheel is so easy to use. And not much you can play with it here, I think. Let's try something. Oh, you can change the... Okay. Ah, that's so cool. Okay, 
Okay, I like the Type 2 better. Okay, let's play with this since I, I have not never ever ever tried Mazda Infotainment. There's a lot of safety and technology with this Mazda, even though this is a base brand. Just please refer back to the spec sheet. I can't go through all of them, but I like this infotainment. Also, this 2020 model has still has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but unlike the 2022 model, now you can have them both as wireless. And before I forget, okay, luckily I turned on the car. Okay, there's a heads-up display. <laughs> you can see it there, right there. That's so cool. Also, even nice design of the air conditioning vent here on the right side. Oh, sorry, same on both sides. And then the air conditioning vents on the right side, the passenger side. Okay, it's just simple. It's just one straight line and then still has the kink on the, the side. And then, okay, glove box is massive. Alright. And then, here in the center console. Your physical buttons for the climate control. Just see, very simple, so easy to use. And yeah, there's few brown buttons here and there. And like the BT50, this air conditioning is so cold. I love it. And then you have a cubby space here in the middle. And not for my phone, literally, so that's good. And then two cup holders with grips on, around them. And then your gear lever. Yeah, it's still girthy, but still nice to the touch. There's chrome around it. And there's a leather wrap around it. Yeah, it's still gloss black, but... Anyway, forgivable. At least they wrapped it in, in this white thing. And then you have more functions here for the infotainment, like a volume. You can also do it here weirdly. Anyway. And then you have your favorites button, your auto hold function, electronic parking brake. Oh, there are two modes, by the way, for this Mazda 3. Sport and normal mode. It says off, so I assume that's normal mode. I'll tie this out in a bit. And then central glove box. Okay, that's huge. There are gloves in there, and then there's a... I have no idea what this is for. What the heck is this? Sorry. Underneath here, the central glove box, you have a 12-volt socket. And then one USB port. Ah, you can extend... Oh, no wonder there's a weird hole as one thing. You can extend it if you want, and just have a small space here if needed. Okay, that's, that's alright. Also, despite being fabric seats, since being the former base brand, these are really, really soft. I am very comfortable here, by the way, sitting down in these seats, even though they're not leather. And then above here, you have light controls, sunglasses holder, and then you have warnings here, similar to a Volvo. This is like a seatbelt warning feature, so that's cool. And then visor, you have a vanity mirror with light. Hello. Nope. Okay, this visor is hard though, but at least the headlining is still soft, so not too bad. Also, you only have manual adjustments here for the seats. Height, and recline, and the ma and forward and backward. The new 2022 models have electronic power adjustments for the seats already. I'm not sure with the passenger side, I'll know soon. That's about hidden in front, show you the rear seats. So this is the rear of the Mazda T. I'll go all the way inside, the stuff's here. Okay. Yeah, go here. Oh, that's weird. Behind the driver's seat, there's no seat pocket, but there's only one here behind the passenger seats. Okay, that's very weird. I wonder how much they save by not putting here on the driver's side. Anyway, just a small nitpick only. So, same material here, squeegee, and then mixed with the chrome. More fabric here, and then the plastics only here on the bottom side of the door. The cubby space is a bit smaller now. You cannot even fit bottles or cups here in the back. Leg room. Feet room and headroom. Okay, that's really, really good. I sat in the Mazda 3 hatchback before in the back. Felt a little bit claustrophobic. I hope I can try it out again. But in the sedan, it's so much better in here because there's more light coming in. The C pillar, unlike the hatchback, is so big. This one's only small. And yeah, better visibility here in the back and less claustrophobic, just being honest. The transmission tunnel is huge. Like, more than my hand, the height, so if I sit here in the middle, at least you still get air conditioning vents here in the back, despite being a base model. Yeah, it's in the way that much, you can't even, you can put your feet up, but it's so high already. And then sitting here in the middle, yeah, it's a bit more elevated now, so headroom's a bit eaten, but I'm still fine to sit here in the back. I'm 5'4", by the way. You still have a few toys here, like Isofix anchor points, removable on each side of the seat and then there's still a central armrest. Yeah, it's wide enough and there are two cup holders with flimsy grips, but it, it does the job at least.
We go all the way down the windows at least. <laughs> That's about it in the box. I'll show you the boot. Reverse. Oh, oh, that's good. Okay, that's not too bad. This has better uh, resolution for the camera than the BT50, just being honest only. It's not how you open the boot. It's actually hidden under the Mazda logo. And then, I think this is an unlock feature. They just decided to leave it on. Open up the boot. You have 370 liters of space. Yes, the opening is quite narrow and small in height. But it stretches all the way there. Definitely spacious enough. You can fit a large suitcase. Just watch out, as I said, for the narrow opening. At least you can fold down the seats here from the back, like a BMW. And then underneath, you have a space saver spare wheel. That's about it. So that's it. I'll show you the engine. So driving the 2020 Mazda 3 Sedan Elite, I am very impressed with this. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Mazda are kind of like premium, well, alternate premium brand and a normal brand. But I will consider them premium, of course, as I said earlier with the fit and finish of this car. But what intrigued me a bit, a little bit more, is the driving dynamics. Okay, I'm just going to dive mode, okay? Then let's paddle shift. Nice. So responsive the gearbox. This is just a regular six-speed uh, automatic transmission. It responds on my command. Like, look, I up shift, it shifts up, and even the down shifts is faster. Like, whoa! <laughs> this is so good to drive. And yeah, I'm, I'm a bit traumatized with the PT50 with the ride. Just being honest, but wow, well, this rides super good. And also the heads-up display is bright enough and handling wise okay before i get to that i noticed this thing is just a bit big for my liking only <laughs> but it's so good there's nice weight to it even though this is an eps system there's nice nice weight to it you can you know where the front wheels are pointing i'm not in sport mode yet that was just normal the off mode normal mode yeah sport mode is <laughs> Oh, this is so good to drive. Yeah, let's just chill and just turn it off. Yeah, I'll get to sport mode again in a bit. These brakes are really strong. The bite is so high. There's not that travel on it. Okay, let me demo. Okay, this is 40 kph. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Compared to the my personal competition, I think it can compete with the La Vida Club Edition plus the Lamando. This can keep up with them. NVH is better than the La Vida, but I think just a little bit better than the Lamando itself. And yes, this is not a turbocharged engine. The engine is quite noisy, just being honest. But if you're just chilling at low speeds like this, it's so quiet, so comfortable to dive. And then over humps and bumps. Yes, the ride just a little bit firm, the suspension, but it's still no means an uncomfortable car. And here, like low speed, just 40 kb, steady pace, look. Okay, this is NVH is probably one of the best in class as well. I'm impressed. And over how about speed? Not nothing, that's really good. And then over rumble strip. Oh, there's nothing going in the cabin as well. <laughs> yeah, the engine, yeah, you can hear it a lot, but Wow, this is so good. It's so peppy. I didn't expect this drive at all from a uh, compact sedan. Yeah, I always benchmark the Lamando and La Vida for uh, compact sedans, but this one is uh, just as good as them. Now let's try sport mode and manual mode. Okay, just a little bit of a delay, but whoa. I want to see if it automatic up shifts. Oh, it does. Okay, it does. I thought it won't. But oh my goodness. Yeah, at high speed. 
Yeah, you can hear the engine, but look how composed the ride is. Wow, this is really good. For even though this is a naturally aspirated engine, this is so good to drive. Uh, handling department, straight line performance, very similar with the Lamando. But also, since this has just been the elite former base variant, entry level, the price is very similar to the La Vida, not the Club Edition Plus, but the La Vida. So, yeah, you're getting Lamando performance, but for the price of the La Vida, this is great. I love, I love, I love this. But there's not much body lean, yeah. It's super composed, even though you're going at faster paces. Yeah, body lean is very minimal. You don't know. Sometimes you don't even notice it. And then uphill, yeah. Look, despite being a naturally aspirated engine, it goes up uphill. It's very steep uphill. No, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, the engine will scream a bit. Yeah, it's a naturally aspirated engine. It's not a forced induction engine. It's, but it's still fine. Fuel consumption reading, yes, a naturally aspirated engine. I'm in sport mode most of the time. And then mixed highway driving and city driving. I've been averaging 7.8 kilometers per liter. That's that's amazing. Yes, it's not on par with the competition, the, the Volkswagens especially, but this is not bad at all for a naturally aspirated engine. Yeah, their claim fuel consumption is 8 to 9 kilometers per liter. I'm not far off. With my driving style, I'm always heavy footed as usual. Sport mode always. Yeah, well, this is so good. If I'm very light foot, I think I can get 8 to 9 kilometers per liter. Some tests say, even though you're not, this is a naturally aspirated engine, on the highway you can get as much as 23.3 kilometers per liter. Okay, I believe that with this number only in the city. So. Despite being a naturally aspirated engine, as I keep saying, this is still fuel efficient enough. So I cannot wait to drive the hatchback version and the mild hybrid variants. I heard those mild hybrids are pretty crazy, knowing they give more horsepower and a bit more fuel efficiency as well. So I can hopefully do Mazda Passing. <laughs> we'll have demo units soon. And yeah, I'm very impressed with this Mazda 3. I finally got to drive a Mazda 3. And yet alone a sedan, since these are the more of the rare variants because mostly I see only the hatchbacks on the road and also before I forget the the ground clearance yes it's 130 something just I forgot the exact figure it's not bad I, I went over big humps already over bumps I never scraped one bit at all so I'm very impressed with this Mazda 3 so I would like to thank Mazda Pastic, Sir Vernon and Miss Charm Santos I will leave their contact details and the address of Mazda Pasig in the description down below so thank you very much sir and miss for allowing me to dive again thank you, for Mazda so hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you with more Mazda reviews bye bye